I'm like trying to keep rhythm going. <laughs> <coughs> We were recording. Good morning, North Shore family. How's everybody doing? Hey, morning to those of us, uh, those of you joining us online. It's so good uh, to just take time this morning. It is wet morning. We got some rain last night, which is really, really nice. Uh, I know that we could really use it. And I would just encourage you, uh, as I do every week, to just put everything else aside. Uh, many of us have been on spring break, so maybe you're feeling relaxed. Or maybe you're feeling stressed that you have to go back to work tomorrow. Um, there's all sorts of emotions out there. Take some time this morning to just uh, praise God for who he is and focus in on his love, his mercy, his grace for us. And if you'll just join us in some worship this morning. We sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, sing that again, bless the Your holy 
it good to know that we can join each other and worship the name of God every every Sunday, every day, if we'd like. It is just uh, amazing to live in such a place that allows that freedom. And so we're just going to respond to that scripture that we just sang with uh, just this good worship song, uh, Every Praise. And it's just I would encourage you to just let go and sing every praise to our God. Amen.
every praise we sing is to his name. Amen. Woo. Y'all can take a seat in just a second. Good morning and welcome. God bless you and thank you for being here. We also welcome the Perellis family to Donna, to Dana, to Sherry Rose, and to Kim Childs. Thanks for joining us online in our community as we worship together this morning when we talk about why worship in captivity. Great thing to talk about uh, because we are all going to face it at, at one time. Thank you so much for, for being with us this morning. I know it's time change and you probably have an opinion about that, uh, except for the people in Arizona. Most people do. Uh, and, and so glad uh, to have the rain this morning. Most of our folks are on spring break uh, finishing up this week, and so God bless them as they travel uh, and move about uh, the country. Uh, lots of things going on in this world. It's, it's great to know uh, the foundational truth of God and being with Him. So thank you so much for being here together. Let's pray uh, for an expectant heart as we worship together. God, we come and we just say thank you. Thank you for all that you are. Uh, thank you for all that you have done. Uh, thank you that we can find uh, truth and security and protection and provision uh, uh, and worth and identity. Thank you that we can find redemption and saving and a fresh start all from you. Right now, I, I pray that you would uh, consume us more than just in this moment. Uh, allow us to evaluate our heart and where we stand before you. Oh, that you would bring to mind things that are beyond uh, just just now, but the things of this week and the things going on in life, help us some, to us to surrender them to you. God, we want an encounter with you. So I pray that you would open our eyes. We come and, and, and recognize the sin in our lives, and we say we're sorry for taking advantage of your grace. We pray in this moment that you would, would consume our attention, that you would draw our affection, we say we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we have a new song this morning for you guys. Um, it's called Echo Holy, and I think it just paints such a beautiful picture of when we come together and worship, it's not even just those of us in the room, but the angels that sing with us praising God's name. So I want to teach you this chorus. Um, the words say, a million angels fall face down on the floor, all to echo holy is the Lord. My heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar, forever echo, holy is the Lord. So, and this is what it sounds like. A million angels fall face down on the floor, all to echo, holy is the Lord. My heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar, forever echo, holy. Please stand and sing that chorus with me. A million angels fall. A million angels fall, face down on the floor, all to echo, holy is the Lord. My heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar, forever echo.
lifted voice of hearts joining in the symphony all glory and honor all glory and honor dominion and power to you oh, oh it's only wonder belongs to no other but you oh, a million angels fall face down on the floor all to echo before my eyes I'll let it take my breath away a million angels a million angels fall face down on the floor all to echo holy is the Lord my heart can't help but see as we sing holy.
worship the Lord on your own. Oh, I see. 
one more time with our hands lifted high. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. And with our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, and the world wonders why. We'll just tell them we're loving our King. Whoa, 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 we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Whoa, 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 we'll just tell them we're loving our King. Whoa, 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 we'll just tell them we're loving our King. What a good truth. It becomes more and more peculiar these days to follow Christ with the way the world sees things and justifies things, they look at us and they say, why don't we just get on board? And we'll just tell them we're worshiping our king. and We are following Jesus Christ. And we'll continue to shine his light. God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for being with us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may have a seat. I believe the kids are heading out the back with Miss Marcia. Thank you for worshiping. So why worship in the middle of captivity? Doesn't take long to look back even over this last week in times that we all get overwhelmed. Whether it was some circumstance that just seemed to be out of our control and raise our blood pressure, uh, whether it was some kind of an emotional, whether your attack uh, of, of, of just things getting out of balance or even you're tired, uh, it's easy to kind of wash over you. Uh, and that doesn't even include the things that we would say, maybe I'm in a season of this kind of overwhelmingness. How can we respond? How can, how can we worship in captivity? And, and why should we? As we lean into the why of why we should worship in this week, it's helpful to understand so many times we strive so hard to fulfill our needs and to satisfy our desires and to control our emotions and to massage our self-worth that we actually miss what worship is really supposed to be all about. And in this moment, I, I think seeing Christ in Passover actually helps us have a better understanding of God's heart and actually gives us some steps towards freedom when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel stuck in captivity. How can we respond? How can we chart some ways out? Well, I'm so glad, regardless of if you're there or you've been there or you know somebody there, uh, I think the Lord has an encouraging word for us uh, even uh, this morning. Could, could I pray again with us? Uh, God, we come to you right now and I pray that you would show yourself strong. I say that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I ask that they would be pleasing in your sight because you're my rock and my redeemer. And I pray for those that instantly were, were poked uh, by the Spirit because they, they feel the pressure of being overwhelmed by something even this last week or they're in the middle of a season right now. And I pray that you, by the power of your word, that it would encourage them to see some truth today. Uh, and I just claim the truth, Isaiah 55, 11, that if your word goes out, it will not return void. It will accomplish everything of which you've purposed. And so we lean on that and pray for your encouragement. I pray for a breakthrough uh, this week. Oh, it's all in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Exodus 11 or 12, we've been talking through uh, the original Passover when uh, the nation of Israel find themselves fully in captivity. And it wasn't just an inconvenient ca captivity. This was 430 years of being in captivity, having no voice, having no choice, uh, just being told what to do. And for all that you could remember or anyone you know can remember, uh, they were in captivity. And so it was like people only knew how to be in bondage. People only knew how to, 
to follow through with just being in captivity. And so it was hard to change a mindset of not just being overwhelmed by that and being uh, pulled in by that and just living that way. And so God came along uh, and, and spoke something new. And we've been learning in this process over the last few weeks that a journey out of captivity is actually a step-by-step -step process. Uh, it's not just something that happens. We would like for just uh, to wake up uh, and, and things just to be different. Uh, but the reality is the overwhelming uh, nature of, of captivity, uh, it's, it's a process to get out of captivity. But I believe the Lord has a, a word for us in encouraging us in steps to take. Exodus 12, backing up to verse 25. And when you come to the land that the Lord will give you as he has promised, oh, that's, that's good, you shall keep this service, the, the Passover. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it's the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. Notice the response. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the people of Israel went and did so as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So they did. You know, as, as I was over and over coming back to this, uh, their response was just to bow their head in worship. I'm reminded of the New Testament passage uh, that Jesus spoke. John 12, both verse 28 and 32, Jesus said, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And Jesus went on to say, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. When Jesus is lifted up, he's going to draw all people to himself. And it's just a reminder of the beauty of Passover. And when we get to see God as he is, he draws us to himself. He draws us to himself. And their response, even before they were delivered, even before they had the answers, even before they could see over the horizon, even before they understood everything or had all their questions answered, is they bowed their head in worship. It just goes back through this, this things that we have been learning over the last few weeks. Oh, they had to do this and so will you and I if we want to walk out of captivity. They had to lock in onto God's promises. They had to, to learn, lean in and learn what God's promises were. And even for them, even so early in the biblical history, there were promises that God had given, even in Genesis 12, back to Abraham, that he was going to give them a land and he was going to provide. And if they looked, he was even going to tell them that they were going to have to go through a period of captivity. Why? So that God would be lifted up and his name would be known and there would be no doubt that this was God carrying out his promises. So lock into God's promises. You So when you lock into God's promises, that's when they become powerful. It's, it's one thing to sing uh, of, of God's promises way out here. It's one thing to say that that looks good or that sounds good. It's another thing for you and I to put our weight on it. So lock into God's promises and then position your heart for action. What would it do this week if we lived totally, fully expectant for God to say, I'm about to tell you something? I'm about to tell you something. And what if we just lived that way? I'm, I, that we would just position our heart for action. That, that we would be like someone in a starter's block just waiting for that sound of movement and that we would respond to that. The Bible talks about having a healthy soil heart. Oh, that God would find a healthy heart, of, a healthy soul heart in me that is producing good spiritual fruit uh, as I'm ready to respond. And, and I've got to position myself for that. That I would jump in with faith-filled obedience. We talked about it last week, that I would be hearing, truly hearing the truths of God, and obey. Because it's one thing just to listen. It's another thing to actually respond 
in obedience. And when we do, it will be just like the response of the children of Israel at this time. They will actually open up and recognize God's presence. If you think about it, that's what worship really is. It's more than a song. It's actually recognizing God's presence. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy towards you, offer your bodies, your life, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by how? By the renewing of your mind so that you can test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's what worship is. You want to worship really this week? Go live your life fully for God in everything you do this week. Worship is more than a song. So many times we fail to connect those dots. But watch what happens. As I allow the truth of God to invade my heart and renew my mind and recognize that he is up to something way bigger than I can see or that I can feel or that I can understand, even in the moment, even when I'm overwhelmed in my captivity and I turn to him and I just offer what I have to him In worship, he starts changing things. Why? Because then we see that worship is ultimately for God's glory. That his glory would be lifted up. That his glory would be known. His glory would be seen. His infinite beauty and worth would be recognized by us. And that we would respond back because once you see it, once you recognize it, once you tune in to God's glory, we can't help but respond back. That's what the angels are doing right now. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Why? Because they see him as he is and they cannot help but erupt in song, erupt in proclamation, erupt in, I mean, face down on the floor. Why? Because he's holy, he's beautiful, he's right, he's glorious. And right now, in this sin-filled, broken world, we are looking things through Densely mirrored glass. Oh, that we would learn to worship and recognize God's presence. That we would choose that. See, worship, I loved this definition. Worship is all that we are, reacting rightly to all that God is. Worship is all that we are. Think about that, though, for a moment. All the good, all the work in progress, all the bad, everything. All that we are just stopping and recognizing all who God is. Psalm 29, verse 2 declares, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. When it says ascribe to the Lord, it's saying, all right, go ahead and recognize it. Go ahead and acknowledge it and go ahead and appreciate it. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Thank you, Lord. See, the foundation for true worship is our redemption, which is what the Passover is all about. The foundation for true worship is our redemption. Think about it. As I understand the glory of the Lord, and I understand the sin that I am, and how that God came to me, uh, God came to this earth, and he spent his blood on the cross to cover me. That's my redemption. And that is the root for me to Glory back in him. Psalm 79, 9. Such a beautiful psalm. Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of your name. Deliver us and atone for our sins for your name's sake. Why did Jesus come down? For the glory of God. Then what did he do? He loved us. 
by redeeming us. Redeeming us. I looked up the word redeem, redemption in Hebrew. It's ga'al. It means to buy back out of slavery. Jesus redeemed me because I believe and have received the blood of the land to cover my sins. Why are sinners redeemed? Why are sinners redeemed? Is it to escape hell? It's a great byproduct, believe me. But no, it's actually not the reason. In fact, if, if you need some encouragement because you're just overwhelmed right now by all the things that are going on in your life, can I encourage you this cry from the Word of God? Lamentations 3, 55. I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help. You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. You have taken up my cause. O Lord, you have redeemed my life. If you are overwhelmed by the wonder of Are you going to be distant from God in hell? You don't have to anymore, God, because God has redeemed you. Again, why are sinners redeemed? Is it to escape hell? No, it's it's a beautiful byproduct. Well, then maybe it's just to get all the blessings of heaven here and, and beyond. Again, a beautiful byproduct, but that's not the reason. Oh, maybe you need to be encouraged, Psalm 27, 13 and 14, declares, I believe that I will look into the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So if it's not for escaping hell, and if it's not for getting the blessings of God, what is it? Uh, John MacArthur put it this way. We've been redeemed so that God may receive worship. So that our lives might glorify him. You're actually redeemed so that you can turn into a worshiper. Ephesians 3, 21 declares by the Apostle Paul, To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. See, we are redeemed to worship. I like the definition by William Temple, uh, one of the archbishops of Canterbury in the 1400s. He said this, To worship is to quicken the conscience of the holiness of God, to feed the mind with the truth of God, to purge the imagination by the beauty of God, to open the heart to the love of God, to devote the will to the purpose of God. So many times we fail to enjoy and to live out our purpose here on earth because we do not give worship its full due. It's to glorify the Lord. Sometimes I've had people ask, well, why do we gather together in worship? Or, you know, whether it's here or, you know, thankful for the technology to, to also join in online. But why is there a beauty to gather together? You know, because nowadays we can just click on and and listen anywhere. But what's the beauty of actually gathering together in worship? Think of it this way. A few weeks, can you believe it, ago was the snowvid (laughs) freeze of of Texas. Uh, In fact, it was a month ago today was Valentine's Day. And it would be the last Sunday before all of the cold hit. And several of you were without power for Three, four days? Uh, I remember Tommy was making it by a roaring fire. And, and, you, and you think, and that, that really can lead us back to some encouragement of why we get together for worship. You put the, clo- the coals close together 
and they emanate light and warmth. When they start separating, what happens? They lose their warmth and they start going out. So one of the reasons that we gather together in worship is, yes, I'm glorifying God, trying to glorify God with my life, but there is also the bride of the church gathering together that we can be encouraged, mutually encouraged by each other. Why? So we can let the hot coals of God inside me, whatever they are, uh, and in you, gather together and kind of stoke the fire a little bit. It's, it's a way for, for God to encourage us all to continue on. Yes, when we are feeling overwhelmed, even in captivity. See, true worship brings freedom in the middle of captivity. Even before they were released, even before they got out, you, you would think they're going to have a big service, yes, after they've been uh, freed from captivity after 430 years, but they chose to bow their heads and worship before. How did they do that? Just locked in on God's promises. They got ready with their heart. They were ready with faith-filled obedience. And you know what? God opened their eyes to all that he was doing right in the middle, right where they were. It had a purpose and a plan in the greater redemption of God. And even we would be encouraged by it today. And God was doing a work as they recognized God's presence and just said, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. 1 Peter 17, verse one, chapter 1, verse 17 declares, And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with imperishable things such as silver or gold, but with, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but he was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. You know the time that I miss true worship is when I just focus on me. What I feel. What I like. What I want. Oh, that we would turn and focus on God's glory and be consumed. And if you think about it, true worship is really shown real by what happens next. I mean, if I was truly surrendering all to God and I was truly giving all to God, then it's about what happens next. How will I respond to being overwhelmed? How will I respond to my relationships with my wife, my kids? A significant other? How, how, how will I respond to the things of my job? How will I respond to my finances? How will I respond to my health? How will I respond to the hidden things that nobody knows about that are trying to press in on me? How will I respond? That's how you can know if your worship is true right now. Because if you focus on the glory of God, then you will be equipped and encouraged to go out and Face those things. How? Because then you can take every thought captive and make them obedient to Christ for his glory. I want to pray just for a moment. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by the things that have gone on in your life this week. I pray that you would be encouraged just by having a time of, of worship. I'm going to ask... Um, Bobby to go ahead and come back up and, and just sing over us just for a moment. I want to pray specifically over several of, of the needs that we would just have a time of, of, of focusing in on God through 
through worship. Uh, I, I want to pray specifically over um, several that have, have given us prayer requests. One uh, to Kim's friend, Renee, uh, and, and Hunter, uh, just uh, Renee Hunter, th that has a blood clot in her brain. Uh, it's to to um, Cassidy's uh, friend, uh, for, for Landon, um, for uh, Ashton, for um, a praise from Louise about God's continual love and faithfulness to her, to, for school uh, questions with JC, and, and just others that have put on uh, that they're going through a, a, a tough, frustrating time, um, feeling like they're in captivity. And they're just trying to, to, to cry out and have their heart go, I just, I'm trying just to worship you. I'm trying to surrender to you, oh God. And so let's pray for those. God, I, I, th I thank you this time and this reminder. And I just pray that you would give us the courage to offer all that we are, right where we are, to all that you are. Thank you that you're complete, that you're faithful, that you're right. And I pray that you would do something to help us to recognize your presence, uh, and that you would draw us up in praise in these moments when we don't feel like it, maybe. When we feel overwhelmed. Pray that you would minister to us in these moments. We pray over these prayer requests, these physical needs. We lift them all up to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades, all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's the word that'll bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required search much deeper you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart coming back to the heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing I made it. It's all about you. It's all about you. One more time, church. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. If you're here with us, I invite you just to stand for just a, a few moments. Would you just bow your head and pray for yourself?
take a moment and just pray that you would have a heart for worship, recognizing God's glory. turn you out by saying, would you pick somebody in the room or somebody else online and just pray specifically that for them? seated this morning. We're going to spend just a, a moment here in, in a few moments uh, giving us a chance to, of what's next. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be moving into to small groups to just talk about this just for a few moments to encourage this. For those that are listening online, thanks for joining with us. Uh, there will be some questions that are on screen if you'd like to participate. Otherwise, you're dismissed. Thanks for being with us.